before I start off on the songs, let me tell you some more about the didgeridoo. What I would, this goes back a long time now, I say nearly 40 years, what I would do in, in the mornings very often is I'd play the didgeridoo. With circular breathing, you can go on for half an hour, an hour. And I'd play and play and there'd be this whole pool of water there on the desk. And I realized that there were patterns, rhythmic patterns in me that wanted to be expressed. And when a pattern might repeat, sort of out of my control, over and over, and then of its own accord would start to change and then change again and change again. And I, I thought it's because there's some pattern in my brain which has been put to rest. Now another one is coming up as being put to rest. I was like giving myself didgeridoo therapy, as it were, this way. In fact, when I would drive up to Boston, which was like a four hour drive, I have a little shortened didgeridoo and I play it and I get there and be all sort of water all over the dashboard. I'd be playing at the the whole, again, these patterns would keep coming through and coming through. So when I started to look at poetry from this different point of view to how most people look at poetry, I, I started, uh, thankfully, I saw with two, two, one, two poems in particular. Uh, one was a, a, a medieval English poem in a book of mystical verse, I think it's called Quia Amore Languio. And, and which is anonymous and very early. And the other was, was Blake, uh, who rose thou art seeker in, in London. And I would, I, would be, uh, I would be playing them through the didgeridoo. And like, I was just, and I was getting the rhythms of it. I was getting what was, what was inside them, as if it was in my brain, these same patterns trying to come through and I could feel the patterns of Blake and then the patterns of this song and then others you know, sub with a lot of Blake and Blake has about the strongest pulse of any any poet and I started off with that you see and, and then I realized that I was in a sense making music but of course I wasn't I was really just accentuating the 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 rhythmic patterns that were already in the poem. And so I had, as I say, I had about 3,000, I had an enormous poetry collection. And I would just go through every day, I'd just go through any number of these, I'd tape record on maybe an hour or two every day. Then I'd Xerox the pages and then, and then they'd be annotated out, which never worked because I, I don't do it in, in, in strict musical form which is the problem that Maud Capelli's had, for example, when she went to the Appalachians and she's taking, she's trying to notate the folk songs of Appalachia, which is not done in, in, in you know, in strict bar, bar form and so forth. So that's always been the problem, which we still haven't really overcome satisfactorily. Do you, the, the musicians want the bar lines because they feel safe with them. Other people don't want them because they feel embarred by them, you know. So, um, so we've never really solved that, but it's. But so I was just, I was just nudging them, going a little bit more than they were doing, but just accentuating it and making it. It was. It's somewhere between uh, speech and song. Like I always imagine when it, when a plane is taking off, it's running along the ground. That's speech. When it's in the air and it's song, but there's this lift or this what I call this lilt. Which is, which is just as it's off the ground, just lifting, which is how a mother talks to a baby. Uh, you, you don't say to, uh, uh, I, I used to do this a lot in Germany because they, they say, well, how do you speak, to, how do you ask a husband if he's saying, has to hunger? Well, how do you say to the baby? Oh, do, 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 do. Well, that's, that's the difference. You know, how you, this is lilt. The way, it's not the, use, the usual use of the word lilt, but it's how I, how I always imagine it. There's like this little look. It's like just this. It's not lift, and it's not on the ground. It's that lilt. That's what I was looking for. You see, and I get this this rhythm. I do this with many, 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 many uh, uh, songs, and they also did it with newspapers and magazines. You could start to find it sort of like anywhere. Once you sometimes with more difficulty than others, but you could sort of 
could sort of find this movement, this movement all the, all the way through. So that's what I did. I just sort of tried to nudge what they had. It's like Yeats said, I've spent so many years writing, I, I, forget, I think you may call it music, I don't want you to turn it into whatever poetry, I, my words, but he said something like, you know, I put, I put the musicality into it, don't take it out. You know, uh, I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree. It, his later poetry doesn't have that rhythm, but the earlier ones do. So that's what I was just doing, just nudging it and starting to feel how they were all different. And there were some ones which were stronger than others. And the ones that were strong, apart from Blake, the ones that had the strongest ease of, of, of putting the, the pulse, they had a stronger pulse in them, were basically what were called versifiers rather than strict poets. Like in, in Mr. Eliot uh, would, uh, would dismiss Kipling as being but a versifier. Because verse means at, like, at the end of the line you turn down. That's distinct from, from prose. But so you go, da, 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 da. You know, I will arise and go now and go to in his free. But that's, that's a poem. But if it, if it do that and it's Kipling, it's a verse. You, you understand? Because that's how Kipling made himself bigger than, <coughs> than Kipling and uh, uh, Eliot and so bigger than Kipling and so forth. So, but the versifiers were much easier to set because they were more speech-like and not so artifice. Uh, Kipling is an example, uh, Lawson is a, uh, uh, Scott, uh, uh, Lewis Carroll, uh, Conan Doyle, uh, Dickens, uh, and, and so on. And, and, and those that thought themselves as being great poets, by and large, were very difficult to set. Uh, Wordsworth is a classic example of that. Uh, and there were some, there's a beautiful example uh, in this book I brought about this, where uh, uh, Lauren, uh, Lewis Carroll takes a poem, he, he, he copies exactly the pulse form of Coronark, which was written by Scott, and he puts it to a, he puts it to a, a, a fun verse thing, but take exactly uh, captures uh, Scott's uh, form, his pulse form, you see? And I did this for many, many years with I go through whole passages of the Bible and, and, and oh, I did it, oh, every day I did this, on and on and on and on and on, for, for a long time. And I found there was some, say, much easier to do, and some you'd have to cheat a bit and take out a word. or And you found, with the exception of Blake, that if you had your accent on an unimportant word, there was either something wrong with me getting it wrong, or something wrong with, with them, and I'd have to w work out which one it was, and I I spent hours just singing these things over and over, and, to, and walking with them was a big help, because if you walked with them, you sort of get into this rhythm with them, and, and, and sometimes you'd have to cut out a word or do something. Uh, there's a famous story about, you know, Vaughan Williams set uh, Hoosman's On Wind Like Edge, and Hoosman complained that, that Vaughan Williams altered the poetry. And he says, a damn good thing I did. You know, because he was looking for a pulse. But, they, but, but he imposed his pulse form on, on, on Hoosman, not releasing Hoosman's pulse form and maybe having to modify it just a little bit. If, if you think of um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jerusalem, and did these feet in ancient time. Well, you take what Blake wrote, then you see what Parry does to it and he just emasculates, castrates Blake and, and imposes his own weak pulse on top of the Blake strong pulse, which, which uh, it, it, it's just not fair. So I've never written songs like that. I've just taken what they've done and nudged them, brought out more of what they were doing. There are a few times you have to sort of change a line around, and, but very, very rare. That was rare. But then... Overdoing this for so many years, I mean, uh, that I seem to be getting <clears throat> to a deeper pulse form that underlay nearly all the poetry. That once you could find that, it all started to become much the same because I'd, I'd gone somehow deeper into it. 
but it still was Blake I was going into, not Diamond I was going into, you know. And uh, so I've done, oh, some thousands of those. What I did also, <clears throat> which relates to that, is I would take a, a lot of uh, writers, say Emerson, or say Thoreau, who always disappointed me because the, the energy is not really in it, in the prose, as I thought it should be. But if you, if you put it in poetic, in verse form, just right, all of a sudden the energy is there. You know, it, and I've done a lot of that, and, and, and laying out, uh, uh, say, Wordsworth a little bit differently, or Coleridge, uh, and so forth. I'm just, I'm not, I'm just facilitating what they're doing. I'm like sort of breathing a little bit more air into what they're doing. That's all. That's why I don't think they're songs. They're just mm. uh, accentuations of what of the song that they've they've done. You know, mm. uh, a, a a good example. This gets very uh, difficult in one sense until you uh, go into it. Uh, allow yourself to go in, is Hopkins and with the sprung rhythms and so forth. Some of those are. Uh, 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 Glory be to God for dappled things, for you know, and so forth, for, uh, and so you know, and uh, charge, charge with God, the grandeur of God, and you, I just forget now, but you get this, uh, and, and you start to get his his rhythms, but then you then you you sort of work with them, you you allow them to work on you, and I would often walk with them, and walk with them, and it starts to sort of become easier and easier as you walk with them.